chances are that you've never heard of the Lumina phone. It's an odd musical instrument created a hundred years ago and only one prototype was ever made. So far as I can tell, no recordings of it being played were made either, so I'd guess you've never heard it. But today, you will. I've brought this strange musical instrument of the past back to life. The Luminophone has a really interesting history. It was invented by a man named Harry Grindel Matthews. He invented a lot of other things as well, like a wireless remote control system for submarines and a self-writing flying machine. But he is best known for a dubious claim he made about creating what he called a death ray. It was supposed to instantly and silently kill and bring motors to a halt. He claimed it would end wars forever. All of this created quite the international stir, but he was never able to back up those claims with a demonstration, and so he lost the people's trust. A New York Times article from the time about the Luminophone derisively called him Death Ray Man. The Luminophone, on the other hand, was definitely real. People who heard it described it as sounding something like a little pipe organ. The instrument consisted of a spinning metal disc with rings of holes in it. Each ring could be illuminated by a separate light bulb when a key on a keyboard was pressed. That allowed light through, but only when holes passed by the light. That light fell on a selenium cell, which was an early photoresistor. This turned the pulses of light into pulses of electrical current, which were passed through amplifiers before being fed into a speaker. This mysterious instrument and the history surrounding it piqued my interest. I wanted to hear it for myself, but it seems to have been lost to history. But pictures and even circuit diagrams have survived. So I decided to build my own luminophone. This is what Matthew's luminophone circuit looked like. Each key turned on an incandescent bulb that was directed at a particular ring on the metal disc, which was spinning at 400 RPMs. Light that made it through the disc fell on the selenium cell, which altered the amount of current that flowed through it and the transformer it was in series with. This transformer removed any DC components from the signal, leaving just the light modulated signal on the other side of the transformer. This was fed into some amplifiers before it reached a speaker. The reason the spinning disc was necessary was due to the technological limitations of the day. Incandescent bulbs do not turn on and off rapidly as a modern LED or laser does, for example, so the holes in the metal provided the fast transitions. This setup also provided the control. It specified when the light should turn off. But in today's world, there are much better ways to achieve these goals. For this reason, I did things differently, but achieved the same result. I did away with the spinning disc and replaced it with a laser that can turn on and off very rapidly. I paired that with this Arduino microcontroller development board that gives me precise control over exactly when the laser is turned on or off. GPIO pins are rapidly switched on and off in a pattern I define when buttons are pressed. That switches this transistor that controls the current flowing through the laser. The laser shines on a photoresistor which turns the light into an electrical signal that is played through a speaker. Now as for those patterns, each musical note has a particular frequency. For example, middle C has a frequency of about 261 hertz, and D4 is 293 hertz. I tailored the on-off patterns to match these frequencies. Here's a diagram of the circuit. Feel free to grab a screenshot or check the video description for a higher resolution version of it. So what does the Luminophone sound like? Let me give you a little demonstration of this instrument that has not been heard for a hundred years. One of history's little mysteries solved. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. You might also like my video where I reproduce Alexander Graham Bell's photo phone or turn an NES zapper into a wireless phone. So be sure to check them out. I hope to see you back at my channel soon. Thanks for watching.